and Simon Chrysler's blood, sweat, and tears. And thank you, Toast, because we couldn't have stepped into the stone that we are here over the creek of imagination without the help of Toast. Toast is a foundational cornerstone that will never be forgotten. Thank you. And next up, we are Parabuilding. We have to thank Parabuilding for recording this historical event. You are a part of history. We don't know about her story yet, but we assume that it's somewhere. Somewhere they're swimming around his story is her story, trying to find itself throughout the continuum of time. And tonight, we occasionally have interviews of really amazing people. Are you a really amazing person? Talk to us. We'd love to interview you about you and your amazingness. And I believe that all of you are amazing. You just have to find your own unique amazingness that you want to articulate through your reality, which I believe in you. And so tonight, so tonight, we're going to start off with an open mic poetry jam session. And I will start it off. Unless, has someone else signed up for first? Okay, of course not. Of course not. Only Dankfart can be number one. There can only be one! And sometimes I'm two, three, or four. Depends on the metaphor I'm trying to choose. Is the microphone loud enough? Can you guys hear everything? Crisp and clear and articulate. Okay. Are you, I'm, I'm going to you. Is it for, for real? Okay. Alex, if I turn up the mic, will it mess with the levels? No. Okay. Because it's really important that you hear the poetry. If you don't hear the poetry, your, li your life might just keep going on in its bland state of routine. Even though that's what life it is, meditation, but forget about that. I am, uh, I'm Dankfart the pirate poet. Who are you? Ha, I love you. And that's uh, fart with the P H A R T. Stands for pretty hot and really talented. <laughs> Yesterday is tomorrow's forgotten title. It's humankind, not human mean. Stop being an asshole for fiat green currency. Sheep left eating plastic grass. Oil slick on both sides of the fence. Somehow. It's still not enough. Stealing candy from unborn babies, traders of the arcane, energy manipulators. It's okay. We be meditators, energy mediators. Art is our tuning fork. So many forms, it becomes formless, completely original, imperfectly perfect, seven steps ahead, Bend light with my prison tongue. Black box public philosophy. Video game matrix manifesting. Secret cheat code is love. Remember, wings are in the heart. Be the 37 cents you wish to see in the world. Dance to the tune in your head. Be mad crazy. Know that the <coughs> world feast is possible. Only together can we climb the wall. Shoulder on shoulder, heart in heart, starts right here with you. All on this relationship earth, we are tomorrow's ancestors. Let us weave a myth of regeneration. Sun rays arise in hills of today's dreamers. Bestow 777 generations of connection. Mutant art freaks. Weave between cosmic channels, pull forth vision from quantum sea, skip across body, breathe into truth, work every day, but never stop playing. Hire yourself in making a better world, one smile at a time. Go find the others, we are a bunch of curious folk. Learn to listen before you talk. Poem begins inside.
silence before first jump. Echoes and halls of eternity rebounding back round, caught in middle path. No single riddle. Western mind flood of material addiction. Go walk in woods for calm. Barefoot dust dance. Back to plants for medicine. Tesla can't save us till we have cured our mental illness. All slaves or all masters. Nation, plantation, state. Mother painted in economic borders. Almighty dollar, they say you are the one. Well, I've got 13. Slip myself into thought stream. Moonbeam journeyman, plant tongue fool. Always out of line, but always on point. Third eye triangle glasses. How many mountain passes till enlightenment? Been so high for so long, I forget what my feet feel like. Dusty-haired angels steal poem from apocalyptic smokestacks. <coughs> Future will be birthed in mad visions of artist alchemy. Dimensional frequency distilled into reality. Hollow vessels through which all speaks. Peeked behind curtains. There is no wizard. Just a fractal meal, mirror. All we are is a simple peephole. Big Bang technology, born to play in paradise, no matter what your role. You are a genius, been told you're a bank account. I tell you, you are so much more. The world cannot be unfucked without you. Only way over the wall is hand in hand. I've never met a loser, only people that thought they were. You are beautiful. There is nothing you can do about it. So I'll just read one tonight. Thank you for listening. Uh, and also, there was a very amazing poet goddess that passed away recently, uh, Maya Angelou. I believe it was last night. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Maya Angelou is no longer with us on this plane of existence. Yeah. And on the way here, I found a book. A, uh, there was, in the road of 55th and Arapahoe, a giant pile of books that had fallen out of a car or something. Yeah. And I uh, instantly just felt like she was talking to me. So I ran to the street and grabbed a couple of them. And I have them. And I'm going to start a uh, cut-up project of them and cut out lines and put them into a poetic form and dedicate it to her. And if any of you are interested, and part of that project and taking pages and doing your own cut-up poems and turning it into a collection, I would be thrilled to tear out pages of these books. They're all kind of uh, Asian, South Asian uh, tourist guides, and it's very, it feels very colonialist uh, structure. They're like, oh, look at our discos, look at our restaurants. This is, if you're a woman traveling in the world alone, this is how to not get raped. Yeah, I love you all. Which is it's good advice, but yeah, <laughs> post-colonial colonialism isn't real. I'm gonna find out who's on the next list. <laughs> I love you all. Next up is Jane Conley. Even if I pressed down into the sand, my imprint would wash away. I'm washing away every time the salt water kisses me smooth. No message to explain my drift. Only the truth that is written by my own voice, my own vision, my own voice. I am ghost music forever haunted by whispers that were never heard, and my eyes wander up looking for a scent. The gray sky just stares. Wonder if it knows the sun is in my pocket. Wonder if it knows I like to shade a shadow and how easy it is to cover up tears in the rain. But no answer cascades, like always, a silent tear inches to my chest. And then I remembered a poem. Or, hmm. Wait, maybe I, I think I remember <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Okay. A 
Oh yeah, okay. Mm. Exposed skin warms to so big a sun. Not quite like asphalt, but or no, uh, never mind, never mind. I messed it up. Takes practice. Everything takes practice. Practice makes professionalism, which we're all still working on. We're professionals. We're professionals. Next up, we have Max Toast. I practiced that whole thing. I just walked up here. I practiced it with my head like three or four times before I walked up here. You really don't need a microphone if you want to get people's attention. All you got to do is yell. That's really, that's something that's really important. So I, uh, this is, uh, as, as, uh, as many of you may not know, this is the last night I'm hosting. I'm not actually hosting. I'm not doing anything tonight. This is the first night I'm not doing anything to read poetry tonight. Uh, but I wrote a toast manifesto because toast is, toast is slowly dying. Toast is toast. Drooling, twitching, overexposed to gentrification, beginning to confuse privilege for entitlement, wondering why we have so much baggage when we're not going anywhere, too scared of change, and even more terrified of our own imagination, frightened of anything but what we know is comfort, while inflicting pain on everything else, barely aware it took just Barely aware of the amount of in of work and resources, slaves, sacrifices it took just to have a piece of fucking toast. I uh, so, but this is this is something I I practiced a lot. The closer you get to your destination. The more you regret the things that you've wasted, the talent, the time, the control, and the patience, sacrificing silence for a voice but no cadence, no enunciation of the basis of the pages. Every word is a key but won't open any cages. Fading streams, forgotten dreams are the props and we're the stages. Don't let the actors fit the written lines, memorized, forsaken, taken, wake up, call, wait, rake up all the leaves, each tree litters and seasonal dreams of normalcy. My words become cluttered in linguistic halves and have not. Commission twist, provisions missing, wish the lips were kissed, but this is what we risk in solitude. I tell all of you, we can make a solid plan but never follow through. Flaming hoops because the first lemming ended up a burnt crisp, saying, wait, may we evolve for this? But that's just evolution. I found a solution. We got opposable thumbs, and I think it's time we use them. Got my index finger on the trigger of pollution, internal combustion, deadly projection, while miles of sky get shot at by cars, let's all go Big Brother watching because we can't see the stars. Woo! Is it just us or is the place getting hotter? I got a little money, but I can't afford the water. Sometimes my thoughts get softer. Sometimes my thoughts soften, so I'm waiting for the rain. The next step in evolution is opposable brain. So stand up and be heard. But if you can't hurt yourself, you're just another sheep who thinks that money means wealth. Well, I'm rich, motherfucker, not a dollar in the bank. And you're a portion of my fortune. I got everyone to thank. Thank you. I'm a toast and thanks, Bart and Fishman. Fishman? Men of Fish are, uh, sorry, Miss Cinco. Our, it's secret, but if you want to submit something that's being angry, you submit it poetically to one of us. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Coast, who's a very good friend and a great honor to work with you, Coast. Give it up for Toast. <laughs> Brendan. What says, oh, I know what says next. Next we have Jim, the man of steel. Yeah, when I heard my Angelou guy pass this morning, I uh, put together a tribute to your partner. It's, uh, this is not my stuff. It's uh, my conglomeration of various and sundry things. <laughs> Who is my Angelou? Well, the first quote, this is her speaking. And uh, I am, she says, I am a woman. Phenomenally, I am phenomenal woman. That is me. I believe that each of us comes from the creator, trailing wisps of glory. Nothing, nothing can dim that light that shines from within. That's who she was. First quote. And that was her. She says also, these are um, uh, quotes as well, uh, my mission in life, not merely to survive, but to thrive, to thrive, and to do so with some passion with passion, some, compa some compassion, with some humor and some style. Nothing, I'll repeat that line, it's a just a great line, nothing can dim that light that shines from within, nothing. She says, my great hope is to laugh, to laugh as much as I cry, to get my work done, to bother no one, to try to love somebody and to have courage to accept their love in return, to try to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. Maya, that's Maya. I've learned, she says, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, people will never forget how you made them feel, how you made them feel. Nothing can dim the light that shines from within. You may not have control, she says. You may not have control of all those events that happen to you, but you do have the power to decide not to be reduced by any of them. Let nothing, nothing dim that light that comes from within. I've learned, she says, you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You also need to be a pitcher to be able to throw something back. Throw something back, she says. Nothing can dim the light that comes from within. We may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. Each of us is the sum total of everything that you've ever seen, you've ever heard, you've ever eaten, you've ever smelled, told, been told, forgotten. It's all there. It's all there. Everything, everything influences each of us. And because of that, I try to make sure that all my experiences are positive, positive. I repeat that line, let nothing dim the light that shines from within, positive that light. One isn't necessarily born with courage, but one is born with potential. Without courage though, we cannot practice, practice any other virtue with consistency. Without courage, we cannot be kind or true. We cannot be merciful or generous or honest. Nothing dim, let nothing dim that light that shines from within. That was Maya Angelou, folks. Best that I can do. I want to uh, read this short one. Mourn Not the Dead by Ralph Chapin. This was written about 1900, I think, 1910. Mourn Not the Dead that in the cool earth lie, dust unto dust, dust unto dust, the calm, sweet earth that mothers all who die. As all men must die. Mourn not your captive comrades who must dwell, too strong to strive within each steel-bound coffin of that cell, that cell, buried alive in that cell, but rather mourn the apathetic throng, the, the, the cowed and the meek who see the world's great anger and it's wrong, and dare not speak. Don't let, never dim that light that shines from within. Don't let that light dim that shines from within. Thank you, sir.
Let's give it up for Jim, the man of steel. I have a quick uh, thing to say. Next, uh, June 7th, is the uh, Sister Wayne's uh, Speak Your Truth Poetry Jam up at Adi Shakti. And for that, we are putting together a Starwater Wednesday kind of poetry book of, lo of poets that have uh, done poetry here. So if any of you are interested, talk to me tonight, and we will get you into the first ever Starwater, it did Starwater Wednesday poetry zine. And yes, super cool stuff. Contact me. It's not very difficult. You can just poke me in real life. Not that Facebook shit. Uh, next up, we have Jesse Childs. numb my skin until I was safe by the window in my room where maybe one more sweet siren song and one more grin on the rock could have been the first step but this is really my last. I should have shaken your ghost off my back and left it to moan on the cheap carpet while I made sure every candle light was doused into smoke and every single door was Thank you very much. Uh, let's give it up for Jesse Childs. He's a brilliant poet. But not to judge anybody, but we need to speak into the microphone we, so that we get the, the recording and language and the flowing, and we can hear the greatest poets do their poeting. So we are all the greatest poets and the greatest artists, and we must all be heard. I love you all. Let's give it up again for Jesse Childs. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to hear him. Next up, we have Madeline Andrews. Testing, testing, testing. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm Madeline. I actually leave after next week for two months, so this is my last one of these for a while, but I had some fun with them, so. This is called From Dogmen to Civilian, A Realization of Today's Society. 
Can everybody hear me still? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm standing in a dark, damp, old stone cellar. There's a large, dirty, yellow contraption that looks like an oversized gas can, about 10 feet tall and 8 feet wide. Attached to the contraption spout, there's a tube that looks much like a corrugated construction pipe. The tube runs from inside the spout to a red pump that looks a lot like an eight Acme TNT detonator. Attached to the top of the pump's trunk is a large red lever. Behind the lever, there's a red metal pole. Nailed to the top of the pole is a large yellow arcing sign that is a colorful light up timeline that runs in consecutive numbers. Zero, green light. One, greenish yellow light. Two, yellow light. Three, orange light. All the way, red light. Clamped to the side of the pump is another corrugated tube that's connected to three human-sized scientific sampling tubes filled with a yellowy-brownish liquid. In front of each of the three sample tubes, there stands a man. These three men seem to be in deplorable condition. Their eyes are puffed with fear, and they're swallowing uncontrollably. I know, without the knowledge of any origin, that they are small-time criminals. I look down to see my feet at the base of the red pump. I look straight to see my hand on the red lever. As if from nowhere, an unrecognizable male voice from a location unknown shouts as if over a loudspeaker, Are you ready? I look to my right. The side of the gas chamber that I'm now facing has a transparent plexiglass window. Inside, I can see one of the men suspended in the center of the chamber by a rusted, old-fashioned chain. Cuffs latch around each of his limbs, connected to the links that are bolted into each corresponding corner of the chamber. He is the one that is standing in front of the first substance tube. There's a tube that is fastened over his mouth. It is the same tube that's inside the spout. A wave of anxiety pours over me as I look to my left and see the expression of eminent doom on the remaining men's faces. I look farther left. I see my parents standing at me with a look of expectation. I have an unknowing understanding that they will not be coming to my aid. They had not done this when they were my age, and now it's my turn. Pull that lever, screeches the mysterious loud speaker man. My hands pull down on the lever, and the colored lights flash from green to red and red to green, much like the carnival game that shows you how much strength you have. The light's invisible pendulum begins to slow to slow, and lands on the green, zero. <sighs> I breathe out in relief, but my plight's not over. The second man is now in the place. The first man has become set free. A mysterious loudspeaker voice, pull that lever. My hand pulls down on the lever for the second time, and the lights flash. The lights slow and fall into orange. Three. I look to my parents. Is that excitement I detect? I see my hands grasping each side of the red T-bar, hand holders that control the pump's function. I press down once. The liquid in the second tube, be tube begins its descent into the corrugated tube. I push down a second time. The liquid moves through the corrugated tube into the red pump. I push down for the third time. The liquid moves through the pump into the spout and into the man's mouth. I hear his grasping gargle as the liquid slides its way down the man's throat. I thank the God I don't have to pump again. The man is released. He is sick from the liquid. It's poison, but not a lethal dose. Pull that lever! The third man is locked into the cuffs. I pull the lever. All the lights flash, and my heart sinks when it lands on red. All the way. His head hangs into feet as my hand pumps. The liquid begins its descent until the specimen tube is empty. All of the liquid fills through the tube that runs through the pump, through the spout, and settles down the man's throat. As more poison flows into the man, his belly begins to grow, but something strange also begins to happen. Could this be right? The man is shrinking. But it's not just the man. The whole chamber is shrinking. His head wretches back from the suffocation as the poison seeps farther. 
I catch a glimpse of the tears streaming from his eyes. His be belly is full pot now, and he's about four feet tall, three feet tall, two feet, one foot, six inches, and his belly is sucking at his neck, arms, and legs. At two inches, the man is dead. I walk over to the gas chamber, now three inches tall and two inches wide. I pick up it up, look through the plexiglass, and see a creature resembling of a fish, and it's flopping. I place the can in my pocket where it will stay forever, and I wake up screaming, I can kill a man. I can kill a man is a metaphor that my unconscious used to convey to my conscious my ability to step back into society. Let's give it up to Mad for Madeline Andrews. <laughs> Next up, we have Ian Mitchell. And whenever you're getting ready to read a poem, you should look at the microphone. Levels. It's okay. I love you all. Well, only through practice can we become professionals. Test one, two. Perfect. How's everybody doing tonight? One person's doing good. That's good. All right, so I've got two. These are two memories that I've turned into prose or poetry of sorts. <coughs> Eyes dart quickly around the bar, cautiously, as if their private, sweeping glances are forbidden. For a moment too long, our eyes meet across circles of conversation. In the depths of that green-rimmed pool, I pretend to drown, knowing I can hold my breath. Unintelligible voices hum like the sound fighting through the water. You stare back with that confirmation of a statement that has no translation. Time is a matter of slow blinks, refreshing the memory while your head turns away. I mimic the subtle grin and return to automatic conversations, a step-by-step -step process of consuming seconds with bullet points. Exaggerated praise follows, a summation of 20-something years of etiquette. An outstretched palm skids across the surface of the bar, stretching towards you. Fueled by a smile you've earned, drunk on my own charm, I bask in the warmth of confidence. Your gaze is ignored, withholding pleasure like the polite stab of a shared dessert. I wait. Focused like a predator, alive in the aura of your pride to be seen naked as you approach, I'm captivated by your feminine steps, closing the distance. As you preface your introduction with an excuse to visit the bathroom, I'm eager to, to allow you an exit, ever the gentleman, wiping the blood from his lips with his embroidered handkerchief, contradicting everything I've revealed with my eyes. I steal a drink from your glass and bite, with comfort, a chill that draws your spine close to mine. You linger, too good to be true. Your sense of independence throws me from my stable post of lust. As I drive home to a bed I can't call my own, I reassure myself with excuses of a failed climax. But I remind myself of a feeling I've felt all night. Tease is a word that exists two inches from the skin. In the stillness of the flickering blackness above my eyes, I rinse words that formed in the sensual waking world. Flesh subtly wisps silken sheets. Awkward poses are embraced in the silence in between. It is efficiency I aim for the least movement and noise required to relax and accept the submission of my conscious mind. As if I'm worried, you'll scoot out from the phantom space under the comforter, annoyed by my restlessness. But an empty bed is a poor excuse for a lover. It, its warmth is frigid. I've got one more. You guys all allow me? <coughs> the sun is high in the cloudless sky 
but the dry, cold mountain air renders its warmth unnoticeable. My mother sits at a fold-up plastic picnic table. Blonde hair floats on the breeze over the bright orange earplugs stuffed into her ears. The smell of mustard, sagebrush fragments on the hillside, and burning copper fill the air. I pinch a tomato slice and hoist it off my paper plate onto hers, then toss the 45 caliber bullet casing casually off the table between us. As I return both hands to my sandwich, the casing I've removed rolls in an arc, accelerating off the table and onto the ground. Another wave of bullets interrupts our conversation while dirt and sage explode downrange. Casings tumble through the air and rain over our table, 20 feet parallel to what I've learned is the firing line. Tread's face contorts in anger as he reaches over his Keftes and Paulette to rip one of the burning casings off the collar of his khaki shirt. Instantly, the fury is gone. He's back to eating his turkey Swiss on rye, and the three of us are acting like typical Coloradans, ignoring the rain, too proud to hide. I wait eagerly to witness his retribution, a verbal assault of fuck aimed at the M4 wielding gentlemen that are sharing a shooting range with us. I force myself to ignore a recent memory, a cleaned and oiled shotgun barrel swaying unnoticeably at a cemetery of unrecycled objects, waiting to unload a cargo of shells, their weight exhausting in my arms. You turn me up. At the end of a clip, there we go. Tread introduces himself to one of the men while the other runs off to fetch the one inch thick hand sized metal disc they've been using as a target. We pass it around in awe, a trophy soon thrown away. It reminds me of the warped liquid silver metal villain of Terminator 2 that I half expect to regenerate after clinking on the diamond ring in my mother's hands. But it won't change. Despite my wishes, it's permanent. So we've been uh, working with this uh, stuff called sound. Does this sound like sound that's loud enough? Yeah. Okay. Too loud? No. Okay. Well. Okay. What's the uh, consensus? We'd like to have it. Okay. Definitely not up. Uh, is it loud? Is it too loud or loud enough? Loud enough. Okay, yeah. we'll go with that. Let's give it up for you for being here. Next up, we have Zoe Claire. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. Uh, I just want to give a little shout out to this. Uh, the, our vision for the summer is that we're now auditioning bands for spots at the Arise Music Festival. So I just want to call attention to that tonight. And um, from here on out, we're going to have up to three bands per night. So tell your friends. Eric. Without getting too deep here, I want to I want to take you down, down with me to the place past topsoil, where crystals like to birth upon each other, pressing dirt and water, compacting matter. I want to take you to that place where roots are intermingling to become one organism, gestated out of necessity. The tree agrees to share, and she knows she is as far in as she grows and grows, with roots that reach deep as great as her height, yet she allows the other organisms to live off of her. And when we get there to that place beneath the obvious, I wanna just sit with you until the minerals and elements get enough time to think about what they wanna do. And I have a feeling you could be onto something. And I have a sense that this is happening for a reason. And I'm pretty sure there are whole civilizations down there with their own kings and queens and those enveloping stares that make you know you're really alive cosmically speaking. And when we are sitting and sifting and peeking through soil that is damp, please let us experience 
the way oneness plays out through our hearts with our souls, with those strung out nights spent giving it all because connection is the fabric that brings comfort and warmth. I get in it personally. Yeah, I can go there alone. It works just the same with lessons unraveling. I seek to find wisdom in the mysterious happenings and glint into sunsets just as curious as a child. Yet emptying out has only led to more discovered fullness. And I still sit, seep the same song. It just hits a bit more direct, I guess. Yes, surfing the gentle blades of grass beneath the great oak tree with the largest of our stars shining down upon we, I can't help but wonder and feel and imbibe the mystery of what is going on inside. I drink the nectar of what is offered, and at the same time, I know there is more. So gentle now while you think you can see, but what's happening above is a fraction of what's beneath. Wings spread wide, she is tethered to the earth gratefully. She accepts the responsibility for, cosmically speaking, yes, cosmically speaking, we are here for a reason. And where walls exist, there is perhaps something hidden, yes, what could exist behind the bolted shut door, but a question of what the fuck is going on. So you gotta be willing to ask it out loud, to dive into depths with courage, with courage and curiosity. You may find some things, some rich and some weird, like that mermaids have likely been here the whole time. And fairies are nothing more or less than the energy that we share. And you are all a part of it. Yes, we are all a part of it. Likely come from our own faraway star, yet we are on Earth this time. And the work is lava flowing, guns blowing. The work here is mind-numbing and severely challenging. To go deep is where you will find the magic that exists as a great pool of sacred offering, a strong force of inner trust and the real kind of love. Witness the way a crystal is formed and you'll understand that all beings need time and need space. They will push, struggle, and pull away till all the elements have settled and new substance can be born. Sunlight, sunlight, yes, sunlight feeds plant life, star water feeds soil and roots create symbiotic reason throughout it all. If you let fear keep you from the lesson of deep proportion, know you will only have to dig further through the doubt and the distortion. Cycles compound and yet wisdom is offered with medicine that may be difficult to swallow, but to learn is the ultimate triumph. For we are a part of the greatness that is molten in the pit of this planet and one with that which is untouchable, dear, due to sheer spatial distance. We are as much leaf as rock being pushed out of the way to make room for that root. We are the branch as much as the moss growing on her bark. We are the metaphor for the bridging of the world and we can own it or we can call it a curse. But with your heart wide open enough, you can be free from that pain. Yes, standing tall takes a certain amount of really good hugging. <laughs> Thank you, that was a long one. <laughs> yeah. I, I am a vital pulsing woman. I am an untapped bottle of potions, pondering her truest purpose in this. I am a mother, ripping through lives filled with stories in the shape of children, tragically activating, activating it from all angles. I am the daughter of forgotten passion, of rage and apathy. I am the daughter of your own most consuming fear and innocent in all of that. For legacy like liability will follow you around shamelessly. I come from someplace far from here, but right now a human body does tie me to this consequence. This consequence of separation perceived. I am a human and I take responsibility. I do not look into the mess and miss what I did. I look into the eyes of my sisters and say, what are we going to do? Oh. Yeah. Let's give it up for Zoe Claire and Starwater. Yeah. Or Next up, we have Brendan. What 
the fuck did I choose to read this poem off of my phone? The alignment's going all wishy-washy. I guess the more things, the more technology you have, the more can go wrong. Anyways. Anyways. The Ravens! The Ravens! They flew to the soundless meadows that are filled with hunger, lingering in the shadows of sainted eyes that whisper tongues of what we forgot. And the Ravens, they pierce the sky, grasping time, time slipping through fingers to drench amber horizons of neural abating starlight. Woken from an abyss, I wander through the dust of once neglected walls. And through the walls, I wonder, I wonder if this wandering through these walls is worth it. Manifest the path, manifest the blackness, does it make it real, or is it all just too? Or is it all just too internalized? You lost the battle, so you tried to give up the war in a flush of electric light. The starlight dies like black holes and plainted eyes set free the prisoners of dread to close the wound. In the sky, evanescent twilight give rise to creation. Witness the prisoner, prisoners of dread to leave behind and comet trails of sepia nostalgia, primordial and a sublime glory to spell a narrative and set the prisoners of dread, set free the prisoners of dread as masks crumble in the primordial blackness. Is exposed grating silence beckons waves. The prisoners of dread are set free to close the wound in the sky and through an everlasting pilgrimage. Remember there is a tomorrow for the prisoners of dread are set free, but they can only be threat free if we manifest Yes. I think we should have a Christmas theme 303 with carcasses and uh, cheap Christmas lights from Walmart. Yeah. Stolen. Yeah, they cannot be they can't be purchased. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. One more. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, the final poet on the microphone of the open mic is Reeves. I, for, I just asked her how to pronounce her last name, and I forget. But let's give it up for Reeves. My last name is Jackarusso, so I understand that you can't pronounce it. This is a poem I wrote um, after taking my best friend to detox for heroin addiction, and. Ooh. I've never done this before, so bear with me. Wow. Okay. It's 
Skin softer than well-worn moccasins, pulling me closer, breathing me in. Sensitive yet urgent his touch, hoping this will be enough. Black tar clouds float in his gaze where the green lenses used to beam their fervent rays. I said yes to those eyes long ago, let them see truth again through the falling snow. His heart pulled violently by her final rope, now it's stranded in midair, drifting in and out of hope. The river didn't fully depart her slowly cinched dust from his barren, tortured body, a secret never discussed. Silently, he mulls over his fate between crippling grief no drug can satiate and a flame that burns effervescently inside, getting covered by his thick black curtain of lies. With a mind as quick as the racing river's water, only the ocean tides will sway him from his past where he had caught her in moments of a concentrated dis disillusioned chaos, unaltered by attempts prayed, made to pray under a turquoise cross. In seeking refuge from an inexplicable tangled youth, he distanced himself from peers less confident or uncouth, for fear of not being loved leads to fear of showing love in a world where fear rules us and separates us from the above. Torn from reality by the dragon's alluring cave, he walked bound by the void of a hedonist's infinite crave. Unwilling to let go of it, the freedom of a reckless stage, he seeped potently into his addiction stonewall cage. His road winds with purpose to this day, led to the mountains for a month to stay. He's now with himself, wooded deeply with his thoughts, to decide whether to build up his fire or again be lost. Let's give it up for Reeve Jacaruso. It's really important stuff. We, the war on drugs is a failure, and we really need to support our people. The addictions are just surface level indications of the deeper problems, and we, we can only heal each other together. Thank you, Reeves. And for all of our brothers and sisters that are in a battle of addiction, let's give a shout out and love to them. <laughs> That uh, concludes the open mic, and now we are going to be moving into the music section. There is a special transitional treat that's going to happen now. Everybody come outside right now. I want to play a game. So let's see what happens.